The life of a gypsy. The only home Ray Van Horn knows is his trusty RV. He crisscrosses the United States from the streams of Montana to the waters of southern Florida and destinations in between and beyond. It's the life Ray loves. It's the life of a gypsy angler. The Keys uh, a special place for so many people. I mean, there's only one place in the world that is like this. I'm envious of some of my friends that live here, quite honestly. I'm a bit of a hermit, you know, I live in the Everglades and, and I kind of like the solitude, but there's something, there's a vibe about the Keys. I mean, it's the Keys. And when you drive into Isle Morada, it's the fishing capital of the world. And all the iconic anglers that live here and have fished here for trophy bonefish and permit and, and sharks and tarpon. And I get excited, you know, anyway, but yeah, coming here is, is special. It's a special place. I will give you some advice because if you're coming down on a Friday, everybody's coming down on a Friday for the most part. Get here early. And I deliberately came early just so I could get logistics, wouldn't have to be in traffic. There is a tidal wave of people coming to the Keys on Friday. And, uh, you know, just a few miles north of here is Miami. Millions and millions of people, and then you get here and you're in paradise. Jimmy and I go back over 30 years, and uh, he's been with the Ranger Boat Company that long, and I've been with him 34 years. And uh, he's a competitive tournament angler, freshwater, saltwater, an iconic guide here in the Almorad area. Uh, originally from Maryland, I'm originally from Virginia, so we got that whole north-south thing going on, that Mason-Dixon line thing. But we're great friends, and uh, I really enjoy fishing with him because he's a talent. Jimmy says, you know, there's, there's a great shark bite going on. And I said, shark bite? Man, I've never really filmed a shark show. And the kid in me said, why wouldn't I want to catch a big shark? Or two, or three? There's a million scenarios in the Keys. Oh, yeah. But you're saying, let's do a shark show. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a two-part process. The first part is we're going to go out, we're going to test some mirror lures and see if we can catch some toothy critters, i.e. barracudas. Nice. And then we'll box a couple of them in the frigid rigid and see if we can uh, take them to another location and present them in a chum fashion <laughs> and uh, bring up some a apex predators. A butterfly configuration. Butterfly configuration and then see if we can uh, really put the heat on some of these new fancy plug reels I see you got back here and see what the drags are made of. I think you're gonna like it. You know, uh, catching sharks on shark tackles, one thing, catching sharks on inshore bass tackles. Oh yeah. Whole nother thing. Well, I'm all about knives and gum fights. <laughs> In this case, a dagger. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> hey, it's gonna be fun, man. If it's not fun, we're not doing it. Hey. Take me to the uh, promised land, we're gonna have fun. That's it, we're gonna head out here and cut through the bridge and go out on the ocean side and see what we can get into. I'll tell you what, I get emails from kids, which I'm just a big kid and you're a big kid, and uh, they wanna see sharks. Oh yeah. I mean, everybody's enamored with the big toothy man of the gray suit. Well, you ain't seen, you ain't seen Bass Week on the Discovery <laughs> Channel, have you? They got Shark Week though. Yeah, we do. <laughs> no sir. We headed out of the marina fairly early the uh, sun had been up maybe 30 or 40 minutes. Crossed underneath that bridge, went into the ocean, ran north for a little bit. Jimmy takes us up to some patch reefs and, you know, visibility was pretty good. And you could see it with the naked eye, but when you saw it on that Raymarine machine, it was unbelievable the difference in the, uh, the attitude of those barracuda. They were, if, if, if there wasn't a patch reef and some rocks there, no kudos. Jimmy had a little Miradine tied on and uh, I think I started with a uh, provoker, which is a mirror lure provoker. And it's kind of a five, six inch long jerk type bait type thing, but it looks a lot like a ballyhoo or a houndfish. I mean, it was two or three casts and, and, and we had we had kudas. There he, oh, there he goes. Fish on.
Want to put them right here in the bait tank, Jimmy? Yeah, we can put them right in there. I'm gonna try to do the controlled lift here. All right. He's kind of patches open. Give me to grab his rod. Nice. All right. Sweet. You've got yours. I love it when a plan comes together. The weather was just, I mean, it was blowing out of the east and it was honking. And we had to go to the ocean side to catch barracuda, which I really thought was pretty cool. There you go. Uh oh, double. Double coods. Here comes the rodeo. <laughs> <laughs> rodeo cooding. I've done that twice. I see before. that. I see that. Uh, that was the third and fourth time. The guy can make an argument for just catching these things. Oh yeah. And we have. We unfortunately haven't even caught a big one yet. Jimmy, typically, if you're going to be setting up for a day shark fishing, how many of those cooters will you get before you catch? A lot depends on the size of them. So the wind starts cranking, and I said to Jimmy, "So how many of these things we need? We got six in the box." He goes, "Hey, we're good." So we buttoned everything up, put all the itty bitty gear away and headed to the bayside. The Gypsy Angler with Ray Van Horn is brought to you by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Evan Rood E-Tech, 300 hours, no dealer scheduled maintenance. Camp Light Truck Campers, no wood, no rot. You've got the ocean. The ocean's absolutely beautiful. But if it's cranking out of the east, you can go to the bayside, and then you have all these archipelagos and these keys and islands, and there's a panoramic pass we went through that was canopied over with mangroves. It's almost visual overload in some cases. I mean, it's so beautiful here. All right, Jimmy, this is step two of a two-part process. Step two. So we've caught the kudas, caught the kudas. butterflied them out. Butterflied them out. They're in the current. Mm -hmm. Deployed them. Deployed, yeah. Yeah. reaching out for the shark man do. That's right. I figured we were going to be static, either power pull down or put the uh, min coat on spot lock. Nah, not Jim. When, when the tide started to go out, it was bucking the, 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 the east wind. And what that did, it, it allowed the boat to kind of crab sideways. And if you think about it, instead of having just a dedicated inline stream of scent, this distributed the scent in a wider column. Obviously, that's gonna be a bigger draw. Jimmy, is this a year-round deal, or is there any particular months that are better than others when it comes to shark fishing down here? Well, the sharks are here year-round, right? But springtime, when the water's a little cooler, they seem to be a little bit more prevalent, a little bit more active. Hmm. Um, summertime, there's fish here, but there's just not doesn't seem to be as many in numbers. I don't know if they just move out to deeper water because it gets so warm. As right far as the black the... tips go or? All of them, All black of tips, them. lemon sharks. You'll see a lot of lemon sharks back in the shallow. I think they tolerate hotter temperatures in water than, than some of the other species do, but we don't seem to have as much of the bait year round as you guys do up there. Our bait's normally in the spring, springer months, but, but when, they're, when the bait's here, the sharks are here and when the Bait's not here, the sharks are still here, but just not as many. <laughs> there you go. Oh, coming up behind it. Fish on. Oh, yeah. He doesn't know we're playing yet. Now he does. Here we go. Heating her up now, boys. Uh oh. <laughs> then we ran out of string. <laughs> we're getting down to the nubs. Uh oh, that's not good. There. Oh, came loose. Whoo, we're getting down about four rows. You know, we jumped a, uh, the four or five of them on plugs, and that was really, really cool, but we were having problems keeping them buttoned up, and they were stealing all of our mirror lures. And quite honestly, I was about over budget at one point. I think I lost four or five in a row. <laughs> Jimmy looked at me and said, Really? How many of those you got? 
<laughs> and I said, probably not that many. So he said, hey, and about that time we caught a ladyfish. And I looked at him, he looked at me and I go, okay. So ladyfish chunks it was. Got one. Jimmy D. You will catch one, Jim? Whoa! Spin dog. <laughs> I'd say he uh, he played you a good 350, 400 yards. Uh, he, was, he was a short, short par four anyway. <laughs> He's coming now. It might be by his choice and not mine, but he's coming. <laughs> just gonna say, you have nothing to do with it. I'm just steering him in the right direction. Yeah, you better get ready to head uh, to the back. Uh, he's coming. Not bad, Jimmy, not bad. Leadered, he counts. Sweet. <laughs> Black tips are a beautiful animal. I mean, they're an absolutely beautiful, beautiful shark. And to see them in that clear water in the Keys is pretty cool. We catch them in the Everglades and, you know, our water's okay, but we don't have the clarity that they have down here. The Keys is no different than any other venue I fish. It's all about opportunity and preparation. There's only a few things that you can control. Tackle is one of them. I had no idea that we're gonna run out to the ocean with Jimmy to the patch reefs and catch barracudas. It was super important that we had a wide array of hard baits, different colors, different shapes, different sizes. And then they would eat that a little bit, but we found out that brightly colored lures on a jig head, a 3 8 ounce jig head was super important. So in this situation, a brightly colored chartreuse or the, the favorite chicken color, man, that's what put the barracudas in the boat. Now we're going shark fishing, and you've got to be ready for everything. Even though we're going shark fishing, out on these reefs, you can see a sailfish, you can see a cobia, you can see a permit. You've got to have the right tackle at your disposal to get the job done. And then once we wound up going shark fishing, you've got to have a heavy duty stick, you've got to have a large capacity reel with a, with a really good drag to subdue these fish, and they're still going to pull off three or 400 yards of line. So it's super important to have the right conventional tackle and the right spinning gear. So no matter what scenario presents itself, you're going to have the right tool for the right job. The Gypsy Angler with Ray Van Horn is brought to you by St. Croix Rods. Fish now, do everything else later. Frigid Rigid Coolers, the last cooler you'll ever buy. Miro Lure, turn on the bite anytime. Tie on a Miro Lure. Torque Lift International, the camper tie down and suspension of Gypsy Angler. Fishing cup bait for uh, black tips, I mean, it's pretty much the first time I've ever done that. You know, when you get them on a plug, it's instantaneous. I mean, it's whack, bam, and it's on. And I figured it'd be the same thing with this cup bait stuff. And uh, quite honestly, there was some, it was like they were, I don't know what they were doing. They were kind of nudging it or pecking it. And I figured, you know, I think what they do is they kind of go up and taste it. And uh, so you see your rod tip go, dunk, dunk, and you better be ready to go, because after dunk, dunk, it's whoa! Wrong. There you go. All right. Well, what's wrong with this? Hey, look at that. Let me get up here to the front of the front. Hey. Bring them up here in 20 minutes and I'll help you. Yeah. 
You're on the clock, just in case you wanted to know. <laughs> I'll tell you what. You kids out there, you need to come down and see Uncle Jim and have him take you shark fishing, because it is a hoot. It is a blast. Jimmy, the thing that's really cool about this is that this can be a family gig easily. I mean, it's blowing 15 to 20 today, and uh, you're in a big old 2510 like this. It's just comfy. You know, that's the other thing I like about this place, Jim. You've got options. So, you know, we went out and caught all the barracuda out in the, in the ocean, and it was frumpy out there. So we said, hey, we'll go over on the bay side where it's kind of nice. And I'll tell you what, folks, this is just a medium action rod. Light. You can land these big animals because you're fighting the fish with the butt part of that rod right there. Another black tip. I might have to go forward here. And ease. Uh huh. Uh huh. You don't like none of that. Okay, we got a leader. They are cool. We got all wet, Ray. That wasn't very nice. I'm just glad I was able to avoid that yeah. melee. Here's the other nice thing about this boat. 360. Cool. Look at that. That is just a cool animal right there. That is cool. There he goes. There you go, brother. All right. Good job. Whoo. <laughs> Man, I don't know if I got another, another, one, another one of those in me real soon or not. <clears throat> like in so many angling scenarios, tide is really, really important. And what we're experiencing now is that this tide is almost gone slack. So all this scent is not being distributed like it was earlier. And you can see there was a peak period there where the bite was really, really on. And again, uh, you're kind of spinning your wheels and that tide dies, so we're gonna call it a day. You know, we, uh, we launched nine, is it eight or nine? Eight. Eight spinner sharks today. And I'll tell you what, eight spinner sharks is a blast. But I'll tell you what, shark fishing, the keys, you have this Unbelievable fishery down here. Yeah. And uh, what a great family trip this would be. Do it all the time. Kids love it. They, yeah. School's just starting up. They can go back to school, show and tell. Here's a picture. Caught a shark. Yeah. Happy, happy. Hero for a day, man. That's it. Happy, happy. We're going we're gonna to post Jimmy's uh, information on the website and the show. And, and I guarantee you, you can't come to a more beautiful place. You're in the Keys. You come down here, catch great big fish. I appreciate you, man. That was a blast. Thank you, sir. You Anytime. Bet. Remember, fish hard because you don't get this day back. The Gypsy Angler with Ray Van Horn is brought to you by Procure Bait Sense, ruthlessly effective. Blue Point Fabrication. If you can dream it, we can build it. Dick Norris GMC, the preferred truck dealer of the Gypsy Angler. Bob's Machine Shop. Go fast, go shallow, go efficient. So we get back from that day's fishing, which was just unbelievable. We're pulling into the marina at the angler's house, and I'm going, Jim, what's going on, man? Oh, well, we got a little year-end party here. And uh, that, that's how classy this place is. Again, there's 30 of the best guides in the Keys that, that fish out of this, this marina. And they consider this the end of the season. And let me tell you something, it starts right back up, but just an, it's an excuse to have a party, quite honestly. And it was jamming when we got in. So we quick sprayed the boat off, 
All the guides were there. Uh, it, it was just a fun time. It's a great place. You got to check it out. Live music. Uh, you can watch football. They've got big screens everywhere. The tiki bar is, is, is just amazing. And uh, it's hard not to want to come here because there's so many cool things. The Keys, uh, it's like Mecca. It's where you're going. Sport fishing capital of the world. So, and then on top of that, fabulous accommodations at the island. The Guy Harvey Outpost. Let me tell you something about this place. Uh, they have an oceanside property and they have a bayside property. We're, we're staying at the oceanside property, and we're looking literally at the Atlantic Ocean in our downtime. You know, when we're not fishing on the bayside or fishing on, we're looking at. It. And they've got the Guy Harvey Tiki Hut. You know, the premium adult beverage. They got the beach. Uh, the amenities, the staff here. I want to thank Carly and Tammy. They're the best. Uh, they treat you like wet money here. Not just me. They're going to take good care of you too. And it's a family resort. Uh, there's so much to do. Uh, I, I don't know. It's the place. The Islander in Almorada, the Guy Harvey Outpost. Fabulous. If we're going to shoot an episode in 2016, we're gonna shoot one of the keys. And I'm gonna to have to go hang with my buddy Jimbo and get it done. <laughs>